So now I would like to talk about TapScript. TapScript is the way we express alternative spending paths in Taproot. Essentially, TapScript is nothing other than upgraded Bitcoin script. It is script that is executed when, um, when a Taproot, Taproot is a long alternative spending path and the script is being executed by the validation. TapScript is obviously optimized for Schnorr, checks uh, signature opcodes, verify for Schnorr signatures. It also allows for future TapScript versions in a very easy way. And uh, as I mentioned before, TapScript the tap tweak of the taproot output. So in this chapter, we're going to look at um, how tap scripts are committed to a tap tweak, and we're going to consider how to, how to commit a single tap script to a tweaked internal key. Here's an overview of the differences of, between tap script and legacy Bitcoin script. Uh, for one, the signature opcodes now verify Schnorr signatures, BIP Schnorr. The multi-sig opcodes have been removed, and they have been replaced with checksig add opcodes. Checksig add opcodes allow signature batch ver verification in Schnorr because they require a witness argument for every public key in the output. We also have a lot of versioning options. For one, the tap leaf or the tap script can be versioned. We have now upgradable opcodes, which are reserved for future functionality. Uh, these opcodes are success opcodes, meaning that if these are, um, these are seen during script uh, evaluation, they automatically uh, terminate the script uh, with, with success. I'll contrast that to the NOP codes in the past, which were simply ignored during script, script ex execution. So, so we have the ability to upgrade or version tap script on a uh, tap leaf level as well as on a opcode level. I'd like to spend a couple of minutes to explain how one can construct a multi-sig output with a new opcode check sig add. Uh, as you can see on the left, we have a output script that uses checksig add and checksig opcodes to express a uh, k, uh, uh, n of n or k of k um, uh, multi-sig output. This is our initial stack, which is now populated with three signatures. And uh, in the first step, we will push this public key onto the stack and evaluate that against signature of zero with the opcode checksig. Let's presume this, this uh, evaluates to true. Since it valid to true, we will now have a, a one byte on the top of the stack. Now, as you can see here, we basically will use this um, use this uh, a counter, and as we evaluate the signatures against other public keys, we will if, and, and if that script evaluation is successful, we will we will then have a counter of three on the on the stack, and that counter can then be uh, compared to um, the one encoded in the output script. If they are equal, we have successfully spent a 3 of 3 multisig output, which uses checksig add uh, to encode that multisig. In this workshop, we propose several um, types of descriptors to describe uh, TapScript. Uh, descriptors are to, to specify or to express uh, an output. Um, and as you can see here, the way we propose to do it is we have a TapScript tag which encapsulates different types of tap script descriptors. Um, the most basic one is obviously the peak uh, public key uh, uh, descriptor. Um, we can combine a pub key with a hash lock. We can combine it or, or we can combine it with delays. And so PK hash older uh, expresses the um, descri a descriptor that has a public key, uh, a hash lock, and also a delay lock. We can provide the same descriptors for checksig add multisig outputs as we saw before. So the most basic one is a k of n multisig expressed here. So we have checksig add k uh, and the threshold and the, the various keys. We can combine that locking condition with a hash lock or with a delay, or we can have both delay. Uh, we can have both a CSA uh, multisig output combined with a hash lock and a delay. So finally, I'd like to talk about how we can actually commit a single tap script to a tap tweak. Um, as we saw before, uh, tweaking a public key is as simple as follows. We take the internal key and we add to it the, um, the tweak point of the tweak T. In the case of taproot, T is a tagged hash of, um, with the tag tap tweak, and which also contains the internal key P. 
And in our case, since we're committing a single tap script, the tap leaf. The tap leaf is the tag hash with the tag tap leaf and the single script that we're committing, right? So we have a tap leaf version, script version. We have the size of the script and the script itself. The tag hash is a new um, hash that we use in Taproot. Uh, it consists of, if you look at the input of the, uh, that goes into a tag hash, you'll see that we hash the tag twice with SHA-256, providing a 64-byte uh, chunk that we can reuse, which is nice. And since it is a new scheme, uh, hashing scheme, uh, it provides certain collision resistance in Bitcoin because it hasn't been used, used before. Um, as I mentioned, we have um, a domain-specific um, tag hash that is, that is uh, appended twice, providing 64 bytes of reusable mid-state, which is helpful in optimizing for implementation. In order to spend it as the single tap script, um, we need to prop populate our witness with the following elements. We need to provide the satisfying witness elements for the tap, sp tap script specifically. So if that is a PK tap script, this would be a signature. If that is a PK hash uh, tap script, that this would include a signature and a hash pre-image. We provide the tap script itself, which we are spending, and we provide the internal key uh, to the taproot output.